As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. I get tagged by Muslims in clips like this all the time, supposedly proving these scientific miracles in the Quran. What was it so convincing to Dr. Moore that he had to acknowledge the Quran has to be from God? Let's take a look at the verses concerning the embryonic stages of development. Surah Al-Mu'minun 12-14 And certainly did we create man from an extract of clay, then we placed him as a sperm drop in a firm lodging. Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging clod, and we made the clinging clod into a lump of flesh. And we made from the lump bones and we covered the bones with flesh then we developed him into another creation so basically Allah created the first humans from clay he then introduced the sexual reproductive system so humans could reproduce on their own let's take a look at these steps of development first we have sperm goes inside a woman sperm turns into a clinging clot clot turns into a lump of flesh lump turns into bones bones get covered in flesh and finally baby is created now anybody with half a brain could tell you this even a 7th century desert dweller if Allah is all-knowing, why doesn't he tell the people something they wouldn't have known, like the formation of the embryo inside the womb? That's not too much to ask of an omniscient being, right? But no, just vague steps that anybody with eyes and a brain could imagine. But here's the thing, if you know anything about embryology, you know that Muhammad got even these details wrong. Let's look at step one. Sperm doesn't just go inside a woman and drops in a firm lodging. There are millions of sperm that race to reach the woman's egg, this is called fertilization. Then the sperm combines with the egg to form a zygote, a cell that has two copies of each chromosome. But no details in the Quran, because Muhammad didn't know the details, so he said the obvious obvious inaccurately. Sperm enters and goes in a firm lodging. Let's go to step two. Clinging clot. Ron again. After fertilization, the zygote undergoes cleavage. A series of cell divisions resulting in the formation of a solid ball of cells called a morula. It does not turn into a clinging clot. Muslim apologists recognize this, that's why they started to translate the Arabic word there, alaka, to mean leech. But this is a modern interpretation. This is not how this word was understood by early Muslim scholars like Ibn Kathir and Ibn Abbas. But let's say it is leech. This is what Muslim apologists will show what an embryo looks like. But this is what it really looks like looks like. It looks like they removed the heart and stretched it out. Let's continue. It does not become a lump of flesh. The embryo continues to develop as a complex organized entity, exhibiting the beginning structures of the central nervous system, heart, blood vessels, and early organs. It's not some formless lump of flesh. Then the lump turns into bones, and the bones get covered in flesh. Ron, we know that this is not sequential. Bones and flesh develop concurrently through the whole process. And finally, bam, human baby. Now this view was common among Greek physicians, and it sounds like Muhammad was greatly influenced by Greek works, and just reiterated what they said. Greek physician Galen, 400 years before Muhammad, wrote something very similar, and his views were widespread throughout the ancient world. There is nothing miraculous about this, it's just an incorrect, simplified description of the embryonic stages based on observations and knowledge available during this time.